This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Tuesday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz. And today we leave with news those unlisted Aussie funds are going to get a hurry up on proper valuations from their prudential regulator via their superannuation system. But first in the US, the New York State Manufacturing Survey dipped in July from June, but the shift was in fact minor and much less than was expected. Activity held steady in July and was minorly positive. New order levels are still positive there. Meanwhile, applications for consumers for new debt are falling and are now at their lowest level since October 2020. And that means that those who are applying are increasingly likely to get turned down. In fact, the rejection rate jumped to almost 22% in the year to June 2023. China's economy expanded by 6.3% in the second quarter of the year, fueled by recoveries in retail sales and the services sector and partly thanks to a low base effect. This was lower than the expected 7.3%, but was higher than the 4.5% rise in the first quarter. Between the first quarter and second quarter, it was up just 0.8%, and emphasising the size of the challenge to regain momentum there. Electricity production, however, only grew 2.8% from a year ago in June. Some use this metric as a more insightful indicator of actual economic activity in China. It rose 5.6% in May, and this June result is the lowest since February. Retail sales were another weak point in yesterday's data releases from China. They were up 3.2% from a year ago in June, with the reopening surge seemingly having passed through their economy now. Separately, their central bank did not change its one-year medium-term lending facility rate, which is now still at 2.65%. In Singapore, their graft scandal isn't the only issue rocking the ruling People's Action Party. Now two more senior MPs have had to resign over a secret affair, and one the government has been trying to resolve in secret. One was being groomed for the PM role. Recently there have been accusations levelled at their Foreign Affairs Minister and their Home Affairs and Law Minister, but the ruling party managed to deflect those. The Russia-Ukraine grain deal that allowed exports through the Black Sea ports has collapsed with Russia refusing to renew it. Prices for wheat rose on the news, but good supply in the rest of the world has kept the rises relatively minor and nowhere near the levels even in June. In Australia, Prudential Regulator APRA has been pushed into a crackdown on their superannuation funds and how they value unlisted assets. The suspicion is that many of these assets are being carried at values that can't be achieved in a high-yield market. And that is even after many funds wrote as much as 15% off their extensive unlisted office property investments in their end of financial year valuations. There is more to come, it seems, and it will hurt. The US Treasury 10-year yield will start today at 3.80% and down three basis points from this time yesterday. And the price of gold will start today at $1,955 an ounce. That's up just $1 from yesterday. And oil prices are down a dollar from this time yesterday, at just on $74 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is just under $78.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today down a quarter cent from yesterday, at just over 63.4 US cents. Against the Aussie, we're down similarly to 92.9 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're down a bit more to 56.4 Euro cents. That all means our trade weighted index is now down at 70.7 and 30 basis points lower from yesterday. And the Bitcoin price has fallen in its recent yo-yo pattern and is now at $30,050, down 1.1% from this time yesterday and volatility over the past 24 hours has stayed low, just on plus or minus 0.8%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston. And we'll do this again tomorrow.